Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we are diving into something pretty exciting that is fine tuning a large language model. We'll take a pre-trained model and teach it a new skill. So specifically, how to choose the right tool based on a user request. So we'll be using Hugging Face libraries, transformers and the TRL. By the end of this tutorial, you will understand what is fine tuning, why it's useful and how to implement it yourself using Python script which train a model to map user queries to tool names like search web, uh, get weather. So actually fine tuning is incredibly powerful because it allows us to take a general purpose language model and specialize it for almost any kind of text-based task that you can imagine. You can fine tune a model to become an expert, for example, translator, a code generator, a sentiment analyzer, or customer feedback, a summarizer, or for long documents, a question answering system for specific knowledge base, uh, or text classifier, spam detection, and many other use cases. So now we are setting this by treating to selection as a next token prediction problem, actually. We give the model the user query and a special token, and we train it to generate the correct tool name right after that token. Actually, we teach the model to select the correct tool or function based on what the user asks. That is not the only way to do it, actually. For tasks like these, where you have a fixed set of choices, for example, six tools, like in this case, you could actually use a different technique, adding a dedicated classification head on top of the language mod, instead of generating the tool name token by token. The model will directly output probabilities for each tool. So this classification approach can often be more efficient, train faster with less data, and give you clear confidence score for each tool choice. We'll stick with the next token generation for now, mm -hmm. as it demonstrates the core SFT process, but keep the classification approach in mind as a powerful alternative we might explore later. Okay, let's go to the next step. Let's think about uh, where, when we can use the fine tuning. So imagine these real world scenarios where fine tuned tool selection shines, for example, Smarter customer support, chatbot that instantly route a customer query to the right department. For example, building tech support, sales, or triggers an automated process like a password reset based on the user message. So, for example, voice assistant or smart home, when you ask like your smart speaker to turn up the thermostat or play my workout playlist, or maybe data analysis interface, you could, for example, ask a system plot sales data for Q3, VS Q2 as a bar chart and the model selects the plot data tool. So by fine tuning for two selection, we are essentially giving our LLM the ability to do things, not just say things. Okay. That's the, the basic of AI agents. Let's dive into how we prepare the data for this specific text. Okay. While I've been explaining the setup, the actual fine tuning processor, as you can see here is already started and it's running in the background. You can see the training log scrolling here, and we are running this on an AWS EC2 instance, specifically is a G4DN 4X large, which gives us the access to GPUs to speed things up considerably. Let's quickly break down some of the numbers you are seeing right here. Loss, of a loss, this is a key metric, and actually it tells us how well the model is doing and is predicting the next token. In our case, the tool name. Lower, lower numbers are better, indicating fewer prediction errors. We see both the training loss calculated on the data. The model is currently learning from the evaluation loss. Watching the eval loss is crucial to ensure the model is generalizing well and not just memorizing the training data. So another metric is the mean token accuracy and the eval mean token accuracy that this shows the percentage of tokens that model predicted correctly. Higher is better, of course. And again, we see this for both the training and the evaluation sets. So we want the eval mean token accuracy to increase, showing the model is getting better at picking the right tool on unseen example. We have the learning rate. This shows the current step size the optimizer is using to update the model's weight. It often changes during the training based on a schedule. And we see the epoch, the epoch that here is 0 0.37. And we set for, now just for the tutorial purpose, we set just two epoch. 
and tell us how far we are through the training data set. An epoch means that the model has been the entire, has seen the entire data set once. So you can see we are still in early stages. We also have the eval runtime, the eval samples per second. This gives us an idea how, of how fast the evaluation process is running. So actually our goal is to fine tune the small M2 that is, uh, is right here, is 135 million parameters. It's a model from the hacking phase to hack as a router. Given a user query, the model should predict which of these six tools is the most appropriate. We can see the tools example in the dataset tutorial file actually generate dataset that this is the query. And for each tool, we train the LM to choose this tool for a specific query, a prompt template where we replace randomly some variable just to create many different sentences. And the tools are these six search web, get weather, plot data, calculate, translate text and schedule event, as you can see here, all the user query are specific, for example, for a search web, for a get weather, what's the weather like in New York tomorrow? What will the temperature will be in city, in a specific city or Rome, for example, on Saturday, etc. As you can see the function here, it just generate the row, the row example. And the only parameter I give to the function is the number of example. For our fine tuning demo, we are using 10,000 row example is going to be a little bit long. So actually the epoch is, it's just half epoch. I think it's 30 minutes. I think the training process is going to take two hours. And after two hours, we are going to check what happened to the prediction. As you can see here, the loss is decreasing. We're going to, to check later if it's predicting correctly on the specific tool. Why, why I added a special token here, as you can see. We use the specific my tool selection token that we just insert inside the prompt because actually it acts like a clear signal or delimiter. We're essentially teaching the model everything before this token is the user request, everything immediately after the has system. Prompt that follows this token should be the name of the tool you need to select. This actually format makes the learning task much more explicit for the model. Instead of just trying to compare Play the sentence user, what's the weather like in Paris tomorrow and the assistant, we just add this to make it more specific, which it could lead to various conversational responses actually. But in this case, uh, it's more specific. We are forcing it to focus on a specific task. So the special token helps to isolate the part of the inputs that is relevant for the tool decision. Okay, let's analyze the script. Let's, let's see the code together. First of all, we import the necessary libraries here. We need Torch for the underlying deep learning framework. We need data set from data sets to handle our training data. Actually, we use just for tra to transform our <clears throat> data set that we are creating. We have component like auto model for casual LLM, SF SFT config, the trainer, the TRL that actually is the transformer or enforcer learning library to manage the supervised fine tuning process. We also import our custom generate raw example that we just see now and the function from other script. Let's see this first block, raw example, generate example. What we are doing here, we call the helper function from dataset tutorial and it just generate 10,000 synthetic example of query and tool name pairs. For this tutorial, we are creating data programmatically to illustrate the process, but in the real world application, you typically use actual user queries and their corresponding tool selection collected from your system logs or user interactions. We talk about or read about the special token, the data set from list. Actually, this is the core of the formatting steps. We use a list comprehension to iterate through our row example for each query queue and tool pair. We create a dictionary. And the prompt key of the formatted input strings, that is the user generated query, uh, the special token in that assistant placeholder. The structure tells the model the context, the user query, and exactly where it needs to start its prediction after assistant. So the completion key holds the target output, just the tool name preceded by a space, which is a common practice for generation. We also have data set from list, uh, that actually we, for this data set, we also take a list of dictionaries and convert it into 
a hacking phase data set object, which is optimized for training. We get the splits because we split our full data set into a training set that is 80% as usual, and an evaluation set that is 20%. So the model learned from the train DS, we use actually eval DS to periodically during training to check how well it's generalizing to data. It hasn't seen before actually, is a validation. Next, we load our base model and its corresponding tokenizer. And this is actually, we specify the identifier of the pre-trained model. And we also use auto model for casual LLM. This powerful function actually downloads if necessary and loads the specified language model architecture. It configured for casual language modeling, predicted the next token. So the device map is auto intelligently distribute the model layer across available hardware like GPUs and CPU to fit into memory. We have also auto tokenizer from pre-train here. We load the tokenizer specifically associated with the small LLM2 and the tokenizer actually is crucial because it converts the text into numerical IDs that the model understand and vice versa actually. Using the correct tokenizer for the model is essential. So this code checks if a padding token exists, and if not, set it to the health token. That, that actually, it means the end of sequence token. We are here. This part is critical for teaching the model about the custom delimiter. Okay. So my tool selection string, it gets added to the tokenizer vocabulary and assigned to a unique ID. Now the tokenizer knows how to handle this specific sequence. Model resize model embeddings is just telling the tokenizer is in, is in enough. The model also needs to know about this new token. The model has a, an embedding matrix we, where each row represents a token in the vocabulary. So this line resize the matrix to accommodate the newly added tokens. It essentially adds a new row for our special tokens. So let's go to the SFT config to manage the fine tuning process. We use a SFT trainer from the TRL library. It needs configuration, which we provide via SFT config. So this is the block and let's discover each parameter. So output there, actually just speci specify the directory where training outputs like logs, checkpoints, and final model will be saved. And we can see here all the saved checkpointers and it's a lot. And we have also the num train epochs. This sets the total number of times the trainer will iterate over the entire training data set. So we'll go through, we'll go through it twice actually. We have per device training batch size define how many training examples are processed simultaneously on each available device. In our case, our GPU, a batch size of four is used here. We have gradient accumulation steps uh, actually allows simulating a larger effective batch size. Here it's one, meaning that we update the model weights after each batch of four. If it's set to two, gradients will be accumulated for two batches. Eight example total before an attempt. The learning rate controls the step size of the model weight updates during the training. Actually, this is 0 0.40 and 5, 0.00005 is a common starting point for fine tuning. We have the warm-up ratio, specifies a, frank, a fraction of the training steps, uh, first 10% here, during which the learning rate gradually increases from zero to the learning rate. This helps stabilize training early on. We have the logging steps, how often every five steps actually to print the training metrics, like loss. Actually, it's uh, how it prints, how often it prints. We have an eval strategy, it tells the trainer to perform evaluation at regular intervals steps. We have steps, so how often to run evaluation on the eval DS, it's every 20 steps. We have the save steps, how often to save a checkpoint to the model that are saved here in the folder. We have a report to specifies where to report logs. Usually you can set tensor board or something else, but in our case, we set to known, we disable. And then let's go to the trainer. That's the core part. We create SFT trainer instance. This is the main workhorse from the TRL library that orchestrates the fine tuning loop. We pass it the model, we pass the arcs that from the SFT config, we pass the train data set, 
the eval data set, the tokenizer, and we are ready to train. And here we go. In this part, we can actually start the training. Once the training finishes, the model has hopefully learned our task and we need to save the results. So we are going to save it here in this folder and we also save the tokenizer so we can get later for any inference. And that's all. And we have the, also the, the pipeline for inference. We will see when the training is, is finished, we are going to generate some inference. We specify that we want a text generation pipeline. The model is going to be the trainer, but we can also, because we are going to generate at the end of the training, but we can also load directly from the folder and use the pipeline. Max new token will limit actually the model's output length to a maximum of five tokens that actually is aligned with our tool names. Since our tool names are very short, get weather, and this is more than enough for prevents rumbling. We have token ID, this does the pipeline where the model should naturally stop generating if it, even if it hasn't reached the max new tokens. And do sample, we put it false. That actually is a greedy decoding. This disables the random sampling for forcing greedy decoding. The model will always pick the single most probable next token at each step, making the output de deterministic and consistent from testing. And at the end, we're going to show we're going to show the results. So the training is complete and you can see the progress bar finished and the trainer automatically saved the final model here in, uh, in this folder that is called tool choice final is here. So you have all the things and configuration and the safe tensor and everything here. And now for the moment of truth, <laughs> let's see how well our fine tune model performs. We just try with the, these three examples, with three user query, but actually you can validate, you can test in uh, many other query, but you can also see the loss here that is, is really low. But if you want to calculate the number, the percentage of true positive, you have to, you have to compare many other user query. And uh, yeah, we'll use a game phase pipeline here to make the generation and let's see. Okay, so can you show me tomorrow weather in Tokyo? Here we go, get weather is the right tool. Please calculate the square root is calculate tool. I need to set a reminder to pay my rent on the fifth and is scheduled event. It perfectly learned to associate the user request with the right tool using our special token. That wrap up this walkthrough on fine tuning a language model for tool selection using a special token and an SFT trainer. Actually, it's a powerful way to adapt models for specific tasks. Thanks for joining us and stay tuned for our next video. We will explore an alternative of the more efficient approach that is language model head for classification. We will compare the pros and cons and see how that method tackles the same tool selection problem. See you then.